Oh, it's you guys. Hey, welcome back to Karen Creek. Today's episode, we're going to show you all about these right here. We just saw them up on the sawmill, the Wood Miser LT35. We're going to show you why we think this is arguably the coolest tree in America. Let's go. Welcome back to Karen Creek. Let's talk trees. Not just any trees. Arguably the most interesting tree in America. No, it's not walnut. It's not maple. However, red maple is the most popular tree in America as far as planted in lawns. Cherry? <laughs> Live oak? Live oaks are beautiful, but I don't have any of those around to show you. Sequoias? Mm, possibly. Sequoias are definitely cool. Giant redwoods? Mm, mm. Eh, maybe top three. Palm trees? Top five. Not around here, though. All right, let's just smash right into it. Let's tell you what we think is the most interesting tree in America. Osage orange, hedge apple, boa de arc. Several names for this tree. In this video, we're going to cut one down, slice it open on a portable sawmill. We're going to show you the insides of it, and we're also going to tell you the five reasons why we think hedge apple is the most interesting tree in America. Let's go. In order to completely realize the importance of this tree, we must first understand some history. Before European settlers arrived in North America, the Native Americans, more particularly the Osage Nation, resided in the lower Mississippi Valley. The prestige this tree provided in making bows and clubs made the Osage Nation a force not to be reckoned with. Early European settlers found great use of this tree by planting it in close proximity to one another, creating an intertwined and thorny hedge to create fences to contain their livestock, hence the name hedge apple. This tree also found use in Franklin Delano Roosevelt's WPA project. In an effort to modify weather, prevent soil erosion in the Great Plains, millions of trees, including the Osage Orange, were planted. With the invention and widespread use of barbed wire in the late 1800s, Osage Orange fell victim to the gears of industrialization. Too messy to plant nowadays, the old uncapped hedgerows across America may one day become extinct. So we're only going to get a handful of logs, but for today's video, that's plenty. That's plenty to make my point of what we're doing and how we're doing it and why we think this tree is important. Important enough to make this video about. But before we skid those out with that mini hoe, which is going to be a task, I want to let you guys know we are at one of our properties. This is not Cairn Creek, so we, we left, but I'm going to take these logs back to Cairn Creek with me uh, here in a minute. We'll get them loaded up and head back. Pinched on the blade, I gotta try a new method. I can't get between all these diagonal trees. Let's see how this works. So we've got the butt pinched against the blade, and I got the other two up in the bucket. Come on! <laughs> BTU chart in there right now. You do gotta watch having an open fireplace though because it snap, crackles, and pops like it's full of TNT. It's like you got TNT in your Rice Krispies. It's hot. The most rot resistant, you might ask, for fence posts, anything in the ground. Let me show you this. 
21 years ago, I built my house. Had no equipment, had no fancy excavators. So cutting the driveway in, we started with vacant land, full trees, shrubs. I had to cut some hedge apples down. Here's another reason, and I'm gonna show you right now. So in the ground, cut off 21 years ago. This is a hedge apple stump. 21 years ago, look at that. All right, we've arrived back at Cairn Creek. We're here at the mill shop. Let's take you inside. All right, here's where we're gonna take those hedge apple Osage orange logs. We're gonna throw them on our LT35 wood miser. It's ready for action. So let's get those hedge apple logs in here, see what they look like. So if you're liking what you're seeing today, don't be afraid to jump in there and hit that subscribe button, pound the like button, we appreciate you. It's the Mill Shop Kitty. And did I mention the great fact that you can make bows out of this wood? Due to its characteristics, the way it grows, it's an awesome material to make a bow out of. We're lucky now because the neighbor, he's big into bow hunting, he's made his own bow out of this particular wood. Let's go check it out and see what he's got. All right, we got lucky. Teddy came over to us. He's gonna shoot that Rosé George bow here soon, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about it. So my question is, how long does it take to make one of these bad boys? Several days. I mean, we was up into about four weeks making these bows and go out and harvest the deer with it. <laughs> I completed my goal. It's uh, the Osage Orange. There's a lot of hand work to it. You wanna mill it down starting from the bark through the edge of the white wood. That's uh, kind of with a softer wood. And when you get into the center, it's the more hearted wood. And you wanna, when you get to that yellow, you want that to try to be your first grain on the bow. And as much as you can keep one grain from one tip of this bow to the other, the more the bow is gonna perform and not split on you. At a 20, eight inch draw length which is what i got when this bow was first made it was at 60 pound draw you see these burnt marks on it for two reasons one's for kind of a decorating took a torch and heated it some of it is also to shape the bow you can actually take and heat this wood place some weight on it and make it bend it's a bow that you can make yourself now I used conventional string material to make, I made my own string, but it was made out of modern material. And I also used a modern arrow and a modern broadhead. I wanted a good ethical kill. All right, now Teddy's gonna shoot this thing, show us how it's done. All right, so it's not all roses and cherries. Hedge apple has its downfalls. Let's talk about those real quick. One of the biggest downfalls is it's not plentiful. You're not gonna find this tree anywhere in the United States. It's got very few growing areas. However, it will grow anywhere. It's just a matter of finding them to where they've grown. It's not a propagated plant. Another downfall is when you burn it in an open fireplace out by the campfire or inside your house in an open fireplace, it pops so bad that it's a fire hazard. If you just have lawn chairs sitting outside by the fire, It'll burn holes in them. I've got chairs to prove that. And another thing, the hedge apple is very, very wiry. When you're trying to cut it down, it's got the thorns. It's a very cantankerous tree to work with as far as cutting it into firewood or just taking it down. Those limbs can be dangerous. And it's an extremely messy tree to have in your yard because of these things. The female produces these fruits. They're edible, but they're not good. Uh, even the squirrels and the deer don't like them. Now there are some seeds inside that they'll 
stick around on late in the winter once they start to, to break apart. But they're messy. Imagine having a bunch of these in your yard. The last downfall is it's hard on a saw. Being the hottest burning wood and one of the hardest woods, it's hard on your saw blade. I've done a little dating on this hedge apple. This was one of the bigger hedge apple trees that we had. I dated it to be around 95 years old by counting the growth rings. That does not jive with the use of barbed wire taking over. That leads me to believe that even though barbed wire came available and it was a viable option, I still think people planted hedge apples as a cheaper alternative to buying barbed wire. One more interesting note before I slice this up into two inch slabs for you guys. This has a double pith at the butt of the log. Now at the other end, we just have one pith. So that tells me something pretty interesting is going on inside this log. So we're going to tilt this a little more to make that double pith horizontal. We're going to slice it up. Wow, here's another reason. Isn't that just beautiful? So this next cut's gonna be the money cut. The next cut's gonna get down this double heart. And this blade is just acting up a little bit. It's getting a little bit wavy. And this is just too cool of a log to take a chance. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my blade. I'm gonna put a brand new seven degree blade on this sawmill, on this LT35. That's gonna give me my best cut. That's the most aggressive blade I have on site here is a seven degree blade so we're going to change that and then we're going to get down to the money cut man this thing is just unbelievable it's another reason why we call it the uh, most interesting tree in america i'm getting terrible build up on these belts i'm going to clean those off a little bit better i got those belts cleaned up now I want to give this the best shot I can on this wood miser. This next cut could make or break this video because I honestly think this next cut is going to show you the beauty of this tree. I'm so excited. Are you excited? I know you are. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me on this being the most interesting tree in North America. However, hopefully this video introduced a new tree to people that may didn't even know it existed. I will admit, heading into this video, I was a little ambitious with the title. However, after dealing with this hedge apple, I am now more convinced than ever that it is the most interesting tree in North America. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think? Let's clean this mess up and let's go over our final thoughts on cutting this hedge apple. An old wives tale is that you put these around your foundation and your crawl space and it will organically repel insects. All the study I've done 
on these hedge apple balls, the fruit of the female tree. That is debunked. That is not true. Um, there's actually a company that was advertising and selling this as a natural repellent to insects and the FDA actually made them take that claim down because it was false advertisement. However, if it makes you feel good, put these around your foundation, under your crawl space, and it'll get rid of the insects. Woo! If you're going to jump into some hedge apple, well, you better strap them boots on tight. I'm ready to get back to some poplar. The stuff was a little bit crooked. It cut terribly tough, which, you know, hedge apple is uh, known for the, the that type of wood. So I can't complain. I'm lucky to have it available to me to make projects out of, you know, post, fence post. Uh, I'd like to try to make one of those bows. Wasn't that cool? Uh, it's all about having time. Here at Cannon Creek, it's not our main property. It's a property we just jumped into a couple years ago. We took a piece of property completely undeveloped. We took this wood miser, put it to good use, built this mill shop we're talking in right now, built the horse barn, fuel depot. We built a bunch of stuff with wood miser. If you're watching this video because you're in the market for a wood miser, I would strongly suggest getting a wood miser. I would strongly suggest getting the hydraulics. Wood miser makes a great product. We're very fortunate to have one and obviously to have this property, the, the, the woods, to be able to drag trees out and make products here on our farm. Great opportunities are plentiful here for us here in Southern Ohio. I mentioned earlier a YouTube channel, what you're watching on right now. Uh, we started this back in January, it's been a great adventure. I've came a long way myself personally on the camera, on the storytelling, on just my presence in front of the camera. At first I was very timid, uh, don't know why, it's just uh, something I guess you're up against when you're doing something new. But we're all in here at Cairn Creek. We love pushing the limits on everything we do. The only thing that really holds us back is time and money. Um, we're all in on projects. We've got several projects coming up. I had mentioned the golf green earlier. That is thinking way outside the box. It's something I've always wanted. Tickled to have that golf green. And we're gonna to continue to build stuff. We've got a couple more projects coming up soon. Always gonna be something new here at Cairn Creek, here in Southern Ohio, on our YouTube channel. Guys, Thanks for watching. Thanks for working with us. Karen Creek, over and out.